Hey, Riddle here. Welcome back to my channel. And I know a lot of you subscribed for our home do-it-yourself projects. And I know my videos run the gamut from crazy magical stuff to mushroom hunting. But today, for those of you that loved the finishing of the fireplace and how to fix chairs and things like that, we are swinging back to the practical world to show you a project that we're working on right now. So we have an old mountain house and uh, the problem with an old mountain house is we have the best and worst of everything. The best views, incredible high ceilings, but the problem is trying to keep this place warm. The home was originally designed with electric baseboard heating because at one time electricity was really affordable back in the 70s when this house was built. But we learned really quickly, even keeping the heat at below 60 degrees when we got our first $800 electric bill that it wasn't gonna work out to heat the place with electricity. We had a fireplace, but it was just a regular fireplace. So the heat didn't really uh, generate outward. It just kind of sucked all the heat out of the house and created a very small area of warmth. We also had central heating put in, but the problem is with this large room, this living room, dining room area, is there was no place to run the ductwork without ruining the aesthetics of it. So the, further, the furthest they could run the ductwork duct to bring heat in was the far wall there at the kitchen, which was very inefficient for heating the dining room and the living room. So the first thing we did is we bought a fireplace insert which was quite an amazing experience because the where we live, everything is overpriced and then they really get you for labor also. And so we figured we needed one more strong guy and we could figure it out ourselves and we bought something called a fireplace insert and now what we have is something that can actually hold and generate heat with a fan instead of just sucking everything out of the house. But as you know, heat rises. so all the heat that was trapped up in these gorgeous vaulted ceilings, we had to get down. And this is where our project comes in, the ceiling fan. So we wanted something more modern, and we also you know, wanted something that could be controlled with a remote control and had some lighting to it. The problem is these wood beams. And in the instructions for the mounting, what they suggest is, you know, going into drywall, but we absolutely have no drywall. Their second suggestion would be to actually dig into or carve out a space for the electrical box to fit in into the um, wood beam. But that bothers me because we live in earthquake country and this is already an older house and I don't want to threaten the integrity, the strength of that beam. So what we figured out to, uh, so that we didn't have to build an actual mounting box and that it would flush and still look good and be at the correct angle, in addition to buying the proper bar mechanism that it would hang at the right angle and changing the length of the bar, we found this little beauty. And what this is, this is, I'm gonna give you the exact name of it. This is a ceiling fan fixture support. And what this gave us the ability to do was this will very securely on that solid wood beam screw directly on and we will be able to mount our electric box right onto this. And then it will be covered by this part of the fan. So this was really affordable and it was invaluable in the process of getting this up there. Um, what else about this? Yeah, it goes on really easy, super strong screws, but the most important part about this is you wanna make sure that you have the proper size for the weight of your fan. So this one is the, the rating is 70 to 150. And so you want to make sure that it's enough or it exceeds the weight of whatever fixture or fan you're putting up there. That's the most important part of this. But with a good drill, it went on super easy and super clean. And you can see you don't see anything jinky. So our next, uh, our next um, challenge, and I know this isn't aesthetically perfect, 
it's not as perfect as I would like it to be, but we really didn't ha have a um, we didn't have a choice. There was no place to run the electricity. There's no electricity pre-existing up there because, as you see, there's nowhere to run electricity. So what we decided to do was to draw the electricity from the source over here in the wall. Now, instead of just using the pre-existing outlet, we didn't want to lose a plug and we wanted to put a switch in. Why did we want to put a switch in when it's already remote controlled? Because if the remote control fails and you know how everything's built with, um, uh, to, to break anymore, we wanted to be able to shut it off manually. So what's gonna make this job easier for you or whenever you're working with drywall is there's this amazing I'm going to call it a saw blade for lack of better words. And what this does, this mounts on any regular drill and this very cleanly will cut into your drywall and create whatever size beautiful hole that you need versus using a more cruder tool that's going to rough up the wall and you're, it's going to, you spend a lot more time doing the finishing work on it. So what we did is we ran our electrical wire from here but this is where we ran into our next issue. We, we didn't realize there's a huge header or a support beam that runs the length of the wall here that all these beams are running and, and, and supporting on or resting on. So the furthest we could go up was here, sadly. So we brought the electrical wire up here and then we ran it through some very clean conduit and hid it behind our beam and took it up into our fan and lighting fixture. Now, the thing with the conduit is it comes, you get quite a bit, quite a few strips. Cord cover kit. Sorry, that's, um, it's not actually conduit, it's cord cover kit for hiding and organizing single cords. So it comes with an adhesive on it which is good temporarily, but I didn't really trust it for the long run. So after I got it, ran my electrical cord through there, I also reinforced it with a bunch of hot glue. And you can't see the hot glue at all because I was able to squirt it into the cracks and crevices and what have you. And I think that's gonna hold up really well. Another alternative, you could use the U-nails and you course, or a strong staple. Um, I think eventually, even though from this side you can't see the electrical at all, it looks fine and it's very rare that anyone's ever seated in that side of the house. Just because I'm kind of a freak about these things, I'm probably gonna find a wood colored paint and go up with my ladder and, and paint that conduit a brown color so it will literally just disappear visually. Um, if you want to be more finished, you could put this, they have these little bars that come in the kit also, or you can buy them separately. And these help you to get clean angles so you don't see the wire at all. So this is giving clean a little here. And then because of the, the, great, um, the great idea of that clean hole, you have you know, your disc that you can literally just cut a little niche out and place right in there and then do a really clean finishing job like this and sand it in and you won't see anything. And then once, that, once that's painted up, it's gonna look great. So you see our disc here that we saved after we cut it out and that's gonna fit in there really nice and clean and I'll putty that up and it'll be a real quick fix. Just like the one up here you see. That was our mistake hole because again, we didn't realize that header was there. Because <laughs> of course our intention was to bring it all the way up so you didn't see this little strip here. Now, I know this isn't perfect, so don't go crazy on me, professionals, but this is what people do when they can't afford the $1,200 to $1,500 electrical fix-it guy. <laughs> and I think that's what my YouTube subscribers are looking for. Um, worst case scenario, I will hang a large painting here <laughs> and cover this up. I have plenty of paintings, as you can see, around the house. But most people won't even notice this at all once it's finished because, you know, the rest of the house is just distracting enough with all the paintings and sculptures. So I think that covered everything. Of course, you're going to have to have some knowledge of electricity to know how to wire everything together, but I'm not going to go there. Many of those instructions you will find 
you know, in your fan kit itself, or find a friend who knows basic electrical stuff. It's not difficult at all to match wires up and what have you. And now all that heat that was trapped in the ceiling is being pushed down and pushed through the house. And so we're getting closer and closer to having um, a more uh, comfortable home in the winter time here using a combination of firewood and propane. Okay, that's it. I hope this uh, helps you a little bit. Uh, I hope there's some value in it, but really the whole entire secret of not having to destroy a beam or dig into something is this little baby right here. So just go find one at the hardware store and it'll make your life a lot easier. Okay, bye for now. Uh, if you enjoy my quick money saving tips, our uh, ingenious rigging in, of our uh, different projects, please subscribe, it helps. Bye.